Uh, excuse me, sir? Do you have time to talk about your car's extended warranty? Yes, you, sir. Sir, why are you running? I just want to talk to you about your extended warranty. Sir, where'd you go? I just wanted to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. I could get you big savings. Hello? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel. And today, I'm going to be recreating the Praying Mantis Experimental Machine Gun Carrier. Now, I got this comment on yesterday's video pointing me to this marvel of engineering. Now, just looking at a picture of this thing, it already looks like a pretty cool and interesting tank, but don't judge a book by its cover because it's what's on the inside that really matters here. All right, so let's dive into this thing. On tanksencyclopedia.com, this is the Prang Mantis. So this crazy machine here was conceived in 1937, but first prototypes were not built until 1943. It was a British invention, so it's not really that hard to guess what the purpose of this tank was. This entire machine gun section here is actually capable of raising and lowering, I think about 55 degrees from its horizontal, which gives it the advantage of having a really low profile when it's in its lowered position, and then it has the ability to drive up to cover and peek up above the cover to be able to shoot the enemy without exposing virtually any of the rest of the vehicle from behind cover. On its face, sounds like a pretty cool concept, but I'm gonna tell you right now, these pictures make it look a little bit bigger than it actually is. If I scroll up here, <laughs> This is where the design of this thing starts to get a little bit concerning for anybody who was tasked with driving this. You're seeing this correctly. This is the actual size of the prototype. It is tiny. Like, look at these people standing next to it. When I saw the picture of this thing, I thought it was like, you know, this was like shoulder height right here. I thought these were like massive tank tracks like I see so many other tanks, but nope, this is actually a pretty compact vehicle, which is great for maneuvering around tight areas and getting behind cover and things like that and not being very exposed to enemy fire. But when it comes to driving something, the smaller the thing is that you're driving, the less space you have to be inside and drive it. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. Yes, you're seeing this right. This is a person squeezed inside of a metal box. So in order to drive this thing, you'd essentially be laying on your chest in a coffin. You would control the boom arm with pedals at your feet, and you would have other controls at your hands for other parts of the tank. And what's even crazier is later prototypes actually made room for two people so they could actually have a separate driver and gunner. So apparently it's maximum elevation for raising the gun was 11.5 feet or 3.48 meters off the ground. So it had some decent range to look over obstacles. But unfortunately, despite the cool factor of the mechanism and its abilities, it just wasn't up to par as far as the crew experience. It was apparently extremely hard to control and also it made everybody motion sick when they tried to drive it because like you have such limited visibility in this thing and when you're driving over the terrain like your your view your viewfinder is bouncing up and down so you could hardly even really see what was going on in front of you very well while you were moving so in 1944 it was officially abandoned unfortunately and that just goes to show you how much it really matters what's on the inside. What's really cool is one of the prototypes actually still exists in the tank museum. So before we get to recreating this thing in Scrap Mechanic, uh, I actually found some really interesting footage that shows this thing working in action. Actually, it shows a couple of different prototypes as well. So I found this video called Praying Mantis Tank Test Footage, and I looked into it, and Toby Rickards here, I, I can't verify this claim, but this if this is true, this is awesome. Apparently, his great-grandfather was the one who designed this thing and Toby found this test footage hidden away. So if that's true, shout out to Toby Rickards here for uh, digging out this test footage. I'm gonna leave a link to this down in the description because there's 16 minutes of footage here and I'm just gonna show you some key moments that illustrate how this thing was intended to work. So here's a pretty clear shot of the arm raising up. I think this was one of the first prototypes that only had enough room for one person. But you can see that the gun itself is able to articulate independently of the arm itself so the gun can actually aim up and down and it can aim left and right as well uh this it's really really grainy footage obviously it's super old but here let me see if i can find some footage of the gun actually aiming side to side here we go so look at that i don't like th this is a very different mechanism than the one that i'm gonna be building i'm gonna be building one of the later prototypes which is this one right here yeah check this <laughs> I love I love this footage right here. It's like it looks like such a sneaky tank. Look at it peeking out from the from behind the bush, inspecting. 
And then it moves out, <laughs> looks around, just like giving the shifty eyes here. <laughs> Pretty cool though. Yeah, so this one is probably the one that had room for a gunner and driver. You can see that the gun is actually located on one side of the arm. So I'm assuming the driver is over here and the gunner is over here. They're literally next to each other inside this thing. So this one's definitely different from the uh, original prototype because you can see this one actually has the arm that gets split onto two different sides of this central system here. So I'm going to be recreating mine based off of this version here. Okay, let's start building this thing. I think I'm gonna start with the actual arm mechanism and then I'm gonna build the tracks, uh, the tracks. We're gonna do, you know, scrap mechanic style tracks, which are just wheels without the tracks on them. So I'm thinking in my version, at least, I don't plan on having my player be seated inside where the original person was because I can't get my player to lay down flat in such a small space. So I'm probably gonna put my seat actually inside this big block that was in the back that was likely responsible for raising and lowering the entire gun. Because yeah, at least with the size I've built this thing, I don't think I'm gonna fit in here. All right, I got the arm programmed. Let's see how it looks. I was a little bit concerned about collisions there, but everything looks good as far as the distance goes. All right, I think this is a good functionality for the arm here. Like, I'm, the head's gonna be the complicated part. They got the head to rotate as well. I think I'm gonna make my design modified back down to one person as if there was just one person in here. So I'm gonna center the gun on the top. So there's not gonna be a driver versus gunner side by side. They're just gonna be centered gunner seat, but without the seat and just, just the gun. Okay, I think I'm starting to get there. I got the wheels put down on this thing. Um, there's really, no I've been noticing as I'm building this, this thing was bare bones as far as armor goes. There's the articulating arm and there's the tracks. And there's not a whole lot of space other than that. I'm also realizing that I don't actually think I have room for my seat anywhere. I don't know if I actually have room for a seat. I might be able to like, maybe I can do an upside down seat somewhere like in the back here. Oh yeah, check that out, perfect fit. Oh no. Okay, it took a lot of trial and error, but I found the perfect place for the toilet. It's right in the back here, and uh, it has to go in that particular orientation, otherwise my head or feet or backpack sticks out visibly somewhere. But here, you can see I'm actually hidden pretty well in there. You can kind of see in that crevice right there, you can see me in there. And then also there's one other place you can see me, and that is my feet dangle down right below it there. But no need to worry about that. So I have the controller set up to lift the arm at 55 degrees, just like the original, but there's an issue because this arm is so snugly built within the frame of this uh, tank. When I press the button to lift, you can see that it gets stuck. It won't lift up. And the only way to get it to lift up is to place blocks down, which eventually allow it to lift up. And then it shoots up because of all the tension that was put underneath it. But I found a a workaround to this. It's not an ideal workaround, but at least it keeps it functioning. So the way that I'm solving this issue is I'm actually setting the default degree of the controller to one degree. So that way it's not actually completely flush with the rest of the creation in its resting state. So now you can see its resting state, it's very, very slightly up just by a single degree, but that actually solves the issue. So now you see I can successfully move the arm up and down without it getting stuck anymore. So that's my workaround to it. So if you're seeing that this isn't a completely flat angle with the rest of the creation, that's why. So I have the tank and the arm itself completely functional. All that's missing now is the turret. All right, so I got the first part under control here. So this is gonna be the vertical articulation of the gun. The gun's of course gonna be slapped on top and that's gonna have a separate set of controls. All right, so now to put the gun itself on top. Okay, I think it is finally ready. I have full control over the turret now. Can aim this thing up and down. And of course, I can uh, lift the arm up and down. And you know, I just realized I cannot actually control 
how many degrees I'm lifting the arm up and down. It's just all the way up or all the way down. But for the sake of this, I'm going to say that that's good enough. Um, oh yeah, and also I can shoot the guns as well. We got machine gun fire. So yeah, I'm using literally all of my controls to be able to control everything about this. So one of the th other things I added as well is uh, this flap right here, because I noticed in some of the videos that there was an armor uh, flap on the back of this that would kind of just rest against the top of the arm as it moves up and down. And that pretty much allows it to keep cover back there as it articulates up and down. And it works pretty well. As you can see, keeps it covered. Now, I didn't see anything about how they did the bottom, so I just kind of left the bottom open because, you know, whatever. So now that we have this thing functional, I think the best thing to do is put it to the test. Let's spawn in some enemies and have them on the other side of a wall, and we're going to see if we can take them out with the turret. All right, so off in the distance there, I get a variety of enemies. I'm going to go ahead and pop capsules now. I don't know if they'll be able to detect me if they can't see me through the wall. So... I'm going to try to sneak up without attracting their attention, because if I do attract their attention, I'm pretty sure they're just going to come around the wall and... Oh, the tape bots are shooting the wall. I, th I think they're just aggroing the wall. Tape bots like to shoot blocks. Uh-oh. Oh, this is interesting. My engine sound actually triggers the uh, hay bot. Every single time I move my engine, you see that? But I don't think they actually know I'm here yet. Okay, well, uh, let's see what happens when I start lifting up the thing and trying to shoot. Alright, take an aim. This is a really difficult camera angle to be at, but alright, I'm starting to shoot now. Getting the haybot first. Oh, the tape bots are actually shooting at me. Alright, there we go. Let's get the other tape bots. The other tape bots the bigger threat. Oh my goodness, we're just blasting through these guys. Alright, and now we just go after the, uh, the farm bot. For the they don't even know what's going on. They don't see me. They don't know that I'm in this creation, so they're not aggroing at all. Well, that was super easy. And then we can go ahead and lower ourselves back down. Go ahead and put the turret back in its upright position. And then we can go along our merry way. And am I really missing a block in the... How did that happen? When did that... Did I... How did I not notice this? There we go. All fixed. I'm impressed with this thing so far. Like, look, here's another perfect example. You see those rocks over there? Imagine if those rocks were a tank right up there. Uh, that tank would not be able to see us. But if I was to go ahead and lift this arm up, I could go ahead and then just start shooting without exposing the rest of my vehicle. Yeah, the only weakness my version has in comparison to the original is I don't have fine motor control over how high I lift up my arm. So ideally, I would design... So ideally, I would designate exactly the height that I wanted to, so I was just barely peeking over the terrain. But uh, for the sake of simplicity of controls here and what I'm able to do in scrap mechanic, I just went all or nothing, literally. 55 degrees, zero degrees, actually one degree, technically. <laughs> I mean, this thing is actually kind of intimidating. I mean, imagine this thing just like walking up on you, stopping in front of you, and then just lifting up as it aims its turret right down on you. This just reminds me of those defense mechanisms of some animals in the wild where they just try to make themselves look big. But once this thing starts unloading, it would you would realize it wasn't just for show anymore. So yeah, this is the Praying Mantis tank. I hope you guys enjoyed this recreation. If you did, you'll probably enjoy some other recreations that I've done on the channel, which you can find on this playlist right here on the end screen. Keep giving those suggestions for other stuff you'd like to see recreated on the channel. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.